this is something I almost think I shouldn't be sharing with you all, but if you want to actually capture the largest trades from 551.13 all the way down to 539.44, and you're tired of getting the quote unquote small trades, if you want to call them small, but small trades throughout the day progressively, then I'm going to show you actually how you're able to easily predict things going from here all the way down to there. Now, keep in mind, when it comes to day trading, sure, this is the five minute chart. And for this, this specific day, and if we zoom out, we can have the five day, five minute chart from a day trading perspective, right? We get in, we get out the same day, et cetera. But, and sure, in hindsight, you can see that, hey, it was on a downtrend. I should have did option puts, which is making money to the downside on this day, but I didn't know that it would keep going down. Like, hey, it had a huge pop up over here, then it went down this day, but then it got up and I would have made lost money, et cetera. How do I know that I should be looking for puts? more majority. So the reason why is that if you look at a different time frame outside of the five minute chart, you would have known that very easily it's actually going to be going down for that entire next week. And so let me show you this. This is something I use sometimes to help me to know what trend is fully going in the entire market. This is the weekly chart. Every candle on here represents a single week of the entire market. And you can see A, well, before I get into the A, point one, I guess, is that answer the following question. When it comes to an annualized basis, does the stock market go up or down? Typically, SPY, being the S&P 500, goes up. So with that in nature, just that in logically, that means you should be doing more calls than puts. Hence why from this line, all the way over to where we are currently. This is January 1st till now over here in 9-2. You can see even when the year started, every single week, it was basically just calls, 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 calls nonstop. If you would have, it is almost like if you would have bought a call at almost any certain point in time, period, logically, you'd make more money than if you were put biased. Just makes sense. Then we had some pullback and then we went back to calls. If you call this a little pullback, I guess, not really, went sideways and then went massively to calls. Then it went back to over here, boom, 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 pullback, back to massively calls. And then now it's doing a little bit of a pullback. And so could be completely wrong. This is me quote unquote forecasting. If you want to, I'm a forecast on both sides, just to be honest. But it looks like it could potentially go down a little bit more and then potentially maybe bounce back up for another all time high or right, continue to fall downward and break the low and then maybe keep going down. But at some point it is going to go back up any dang way, right? The reason I say both those options is because, look, there's a low here. If you saw my market structure video, there's a low here. There's a high. There's a higher low over here. Then we have a higher high, barely, but higher high here. So I'm willing to bet somewhere it's going to stop here from a put perspective and then go back up for a higher high. Or, sure, if it breaks this, it can keep going lower, potentially. But at some point, it's going to go higher. This is, if I show you the past five years, right, it did have this big drop, went all the way up, did all this piece going back down, but it always goes back up traditionally because the market makes um, a gain of at least 7% on average annually, right? So the reason I'm able to capture moves and understand that the market's going down like this is because this is one single day and this candle by then, let's go back to see where it was, it started at... 551.06, so 551. So this candle at that time was from here to 551. There we go. And this was red, so let's just turn it red like that. So this candle was this at that point in time. So it went from here down to this piece. And as you can see, A, it went to all-time highs. It started to do a slight pullback at this point in time in a game to here. If it was this large of a candle, when was the last time we seen that large of a candle and nothing actually happened? Never, right? There's these bodies, those are small, those are small, these are small, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and it just kept falling. So logic has to say that, well, it seems like it's trying to do a turnaround, at least for this current week. So I should be looking for puts. And this was that was, this was by Thursday, FY, because it was kind of going, it was going down, but not that much down. And you may be wondering, well, what about all the rest of this? If we go back to the five minute charts, all these days, how did I know to look for puts from this day, that day, and this day, potentially with, you know, a massive drop like this? How do I ride these out, especially this day here, right? How do I know to ride those out? Well, same logic, right? 
from a candle formation perspective, this was the highest of all time for SPY on the weekly chart. It came down, it came up to here, and then a lot of people were thinking, hey, it looks like this thing might potentially break out. I'm going to be looking for calls. Cool, that's great. But look how the market ended. The market ended with, is this called a hammer? Yeah, this with this basically this hammer, essentially, which is saying that there's a bunch, there's not much buying um, activity up here because this wick is really trying to push the sellers downward. Hence why this wick is so long and this body of the, the candle is so dang tiny as heck, right? So that's why it went out here. It tried its best to push through. It couldn't really push through. So logic has to say, hey, it seems like the buy, like this, it's or a different example. Look at this candle versus this candle or this candle or this candle. They're so much smaller from a body perspective. Clearly, it's out of steam. So from that logic perspective, what's it going to do next? Have a giant candle going up, potentially, even though it was just out of steam, so it's going to magically get all the strength to shoot up? No. It's going to be B. It's going to pull back massively. So you could have easily, this is, again, that Friday, where it was on Friday. You could have gotten the move where it's down to here. You could have gotten the put when... Was this, this is Monday to Tuesday. You could have gotten the put when it was going down here. This is that first day when it was massively going downward, where it started kind of in this area in the first place. Whoops. In the first place. Um, yep, yeah, because 560. Yep. So this is where it was at 560 specifically on this Tuesday, exactly. And you see at the top of this, this is 560.57. The exact time where it dropped is where you could have made all of that kind of money. So... Overall, I mean, that's really kind of the hack. Quick small interruption for that specific day with the market going down and me predicting the market is going to go down on 9-3. I made $28,000 on that specific day. And you know what else I thought? I thought, you know what? I'm pretty sure the next day it's going to go down. So I should also look for puts again. So if we go to Wednesday being the next day, we click search. I made an additional 9K from that basic logic. Not even kidding you, but back to the video. So again, not saying that the market will 100% forever continue downward because that's not whatever, always what it's going to do. But based off of the previous candle from a weekly perspective, this was easy to predict that the next candle was going to go down based off of the strength or lack thereof of how that was previously. And make sure just, and again, this is a, in a different perspective, but follow the trend of the market. If you ever go to the weekly chart, and you see things like this are happening, right? You see it's up, 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 still up, basically, up. Then it's just logically, well, huh, I wonder what it's going to do the next week. It's probably going to go up. What about the next week? Oh, it's a red candle. Well, look at this. It was from here still to here. There are, That means there was a bunch of still call option plays for you to potentially do it and make a bunch of money. If you're looking to become a consistently profitable day trader that makes $10,000 per month, then go ahead and visit mkuniversity forward slash info to get started. We provide one-on-one -on -one coaching for two months and that way we actually hold your hand and walk you to becoming successful with our specific day trading strategy, which is trading one strategy with one ticker and day trading once per day so you can be successful long term and actually take care of your family. And it doesn't matter where you are, by the way. If you're new to trading or you're an experienced trader already, but you're still just not consistently profitable as a whole, we'll teach you everything from A to Z from the ground up so you can be consistent, so you can be profitable, and more important, you can do the things you want to do, when you want to do them, how you want to do them, and not have to be trading so much. Because the goal when it comes to trading is to get your life back and to get your finances in order so you can do everything you want to do. And by the way, we already have a 1,003 video testimonials from people that are already successful using this strategy that you've been learning in this video. So if you want to be the next person, you want to be number 1,004, then go ahead and click the link in the description where it says apply for coaching and you can go ahead and get started. And now back to the video. Still went basically up, still went up, still went up. So that's fine. And then the only time, and then you can see this, like green candle to a red candle and then it starts pulling backwards. We knew that this was also going to pull backwards because this candle versus this green one here, higher time frame or not, it's an engulfing, uh, engulfing ca uh, candle, excuse me. So this body is bigger than this this body here, hence why it showed that, hey, look, it's going to go downward, essentially. Hence why if we go back to this candle here, we had a green one, then we had a red one, you're thinking, oh my God, it's gonna pull back. Well, not really, the falling candle engulfed it. it this body is bigger than this, this body here, hence why it kept going up. 
as it was forming, maybe on a Monday through Tuesday, you can see it's forming on this. Boom, that means we're good for calls, so let's keep going for calls. See, right? This engulfed that, doesn't matter. Still engulfed that, did not matter, so it still kept going up. This is the only time it engulfed it, basically. Um, and there's really not too much to it, per se. So I, and we can go fully zoom out, right? There's been trends specifically where it's gone massively down lower, but really big pullbacks, massively down lower, big pullbacks. But you can still see, if you watched again, my market context video where I talked about trending, it's still the same concept, low, high, low, high, low, high, low, and it broke above, it started going back up essentially. So if you want to know the trends of where the entire market's going, just generally overall, so you can know when it comes from a day trading perspective, what size you should be on traditionally, look at the weekly chart. But that's my hack uh, more specifically on how you can catch those giant moves 